Hey everybody, it's Master Gallengeist here, bringing you my review for the latest episode of Supernatural, Optimism. And, there were some good things that were done in this episode, but, overall, it's just, it failed both stories that it presented with, in my opinion. Mainly because they had to fight for screen time with each other. Now, the better formed of the portions of the episode dealt with Dean and Jack. The ones that <laughs> were dealing with Sam and alternate universe Charlie just felt tacked on to essentially pad out and fill the episode. Which, if they were doing things correctly, the Dean and Jack one would have been able to carry out on its own. And we didn't really get much with, like, much cast, so it's like, okay... He's been gone for a little bit. Uh, we still have, like, pretty much no idea what the hell's going on with Nick, which is insanity because he's, like, one of the most interesting parts, and he's just being cooled off for so long storyline-wise. It's like, people are going to be like, when he does pop up, oh, yeah, I kind of remember that going on, but... Overall, this is an okay episode of Supernatural, but each storyline could have at least presented enough to warrant its own episode and have been better fleshed out, and it's just a disservice to the characters and the storylines involved, in my opinion. So, let's get the crappier one out of the way. Sam and Alternate Universe Charlie's just pretty much dealt with trying to hunt a monster, a muska, which is essentially the human fly kind of scenario. It's this half fly, half human monster thing. And every so often, the, they've got a group, and one male is kind of pushed out because there's no females, and essentially goes on a murder spree of killing people and uh, putting the bodies together and um, screwing it. Yeah, that's pretty much it, and they're just sitting in a truck, in a truck pretty much staking it out. We get some more information from Alternate Universe Charlie, how she had a lover and everything, who evidently had a bakery in Chicago with, like, cupcakes or whatnot, and then every society broke down, she was killed in the ensuing aftermath, and after this case, she's going to be done with hunting. Sam really barely is just parrots the same kind of lines and doesn't even really connect with her. Not because that's not Sam's character. That is Sam's character connected with these people. But it's not given enough time to breathe. It's just condensed to, okay, they're sitting out staking. They see this person dressed up in all this stuff, which actually turns out that really be the monster. No really misdirect is given. And that's about it. They, like, wait until eventually the monster makes its move. And they go in, Charlie gets kind of knocked out, and then Sam kind of tussles with the monster, and they're able to kill it, even though they'd seen in the Lord that there was a certain way to kill it, but they pretty much just improvise and Sam shoots his head off. Of course, going throughout all this, Charlie is able to reconsider leaving, but... I really don't care because this isn't our Charlie in the same way as Alternate Universe Bobby isn't our Bobby. They're kind of similar, but it's like we've already kind of moved on from those characters. And you've changed up these characters to such a degree, not to such a degree that they're like unrecognizable, but we've already kind of moved on. So if it's not those exact characters, I don't know why you're kind of bringing them into have them here anyway. It's kind of almost a scenario of, say that you got a TV show that you had that you used to love, and they decide to reboot it and bring it back, and they are doing a hazy scenario, where they're trying to give you something nostalgia-wise a little bit, but also change it. If you're doing something like that, either have it completely devoted to nostalgia to keep what's going on, or keep it to the point where you move so far past that you can change it drastically. This is just like servicing no one. I'm like, okay, you're barely develop like having enough screen time to develop these characters properly enough. If you're going to bring them in, go and commit all the way. Otherwise, it's just 
window dressing them back like, okay, we've got a lot of other characters that you can do stuff with. Can we have those? Eh? But he's talking about like how it's better to be in a group and like have people support each other. And we see that the Muska people come and take their fallen brother for funeral rites, I guess. I don't know if it's also setting up for some kind of revenge thing, but I hope not, because the thing is, it's kind of the life cycle of these things, and I'm like, oh yeah, at least it wasn't a horrendous death or something, or anything, but I don't know anymore, it's like, the only takeaway from this is like, oh, Charlie will think about not leaving, even though it's like heavily implied that she's gonna stay. So, that was just a complete fluff, uh, we get into the good stuff with Dean and Jack, and the beginning of the episode started off their whole storyline as we saw it kind of had a weird feel to it. It felt like weird, poppy kind of soap opera. Not soap opera, but very happy-go-lucky. I could say almost like an Archie's comic kind of feel going on. We'll kind of tie that back in later. As this girl goes into her library job and everything, this dude kind of Make sure that they're on for dinner. He's trying to heavily imply that it's a date. And then he leaves and immediately gets killed. And then we get back into the bunker. We see Jack and Dean pretty much trying to come to terms with what they both believe is their failures with Michael. Uh, Dean in accepting Michael's offer and Jack in not being able to kill Michael when he had the chance. And of course he's like, listen, I'm just sitting here stewing on this. I need something to do, which... It's kind of cool how we got diving into that whole thing of, like, why it's good for them to go on these Monster the Hunt escapades to kind of clear their head and to have something productive to do. Helping people, saving people, family business kind of stuff. So, he agrees, and Cass has been really talking about saying he knows what he's doing, and they decide to go out there and check it out. Jack had, of course, showed him what was going on, and like, alright, we'll go check this out. They get into this diner, trying to talk about the dude, because evidently he had went there for breakfast, like, every morning and whatnot. <laughs> and Jack was, like, talking about his obituary, and he's like, yeah, that's kind of what they put in there when it's a young dude who just died like that. You really don't have much. They try to talk to the waitress. She's like, hey, screw you guys. I'm going to go make my money, and Dean pulls it out. <laughs> Jack's got some funny lines about, like, courting and dating and all that kind of stuff. But they get the lowdown from the waitress and everybody else that this girl's had a lot of bad luck with all these uh, potential date people dying on her. And we're like, oh, okay. Dean, of course, whips out the whole thing that they both get some pie. Kind of like that. <laughs> He's like, eat your pie and everything. Because it's also been shown in the beginning of the episode that Jack is trying to figure out his tastes and everything again since he's human. And I thought, oh, that's a cool little tidbit. And he's, like, trying to get more information on all this stuff about, like, dating and all that because he's only seen romantic comedies. I'm like, yeah, that's not going to work. And he's like, okay, when we get back to the bunker, I'll give you the talk. But until then, here's the plan. And we see them go, and I really kind of like their idea. Dean goes in and essentially... uh acts as the bad cop FBI kind of dude trying to get her to talk about all this stuff with the guy that died. Jack comes in and kind of saves the day, calls him old man and everything, and <laughs> he goes out because he's pretty much hit him out of the park with the old man thing and him sitting in the car going, I'm old man and all that. I was like, yeah, typical Dean kind of stuff. But Jack kind of connects with uh, the girl, Harper Sales, and he's like, hey, I was kind of interested in a book about the town and all that. Like, oh, I've got one at home. And she's, like, taking him to her apartment really quickly. And he's like, what are you doing? Because he's kind of the head of the library. We'd seen him with the other guy that was asking her out. And he's like, she's like listen, it's just really close by. I'll be back. So he goes off to dump the trash. Dean's getting ready to kind of follow and tail him because they're not quite sure what's going on with her. And we hear this scream. And Dean kind of goes back and sees that the dude has been killed. And we see something kind of going through the bushes. And we see that Jack gets into the apartment. He 
it was really kind of cool to see him have all the different kind of ways to try and test if she's a monster. Because he puts a silver coin on the floor. He kind of puts holy water on his hands and everything. She's like, oh, did you drop this? She picks it up, gives it to him, and gives the book to him as well. He uh, coughs uh, Christo and all that and tried to use all these ways to see if she's like possessed. Uh, she could be like a werewolf, vampire, shifter, all that kind of good stuff. And it was just cool because it's that kind of halfway between stage of like a hunter where at first it would be kind of like completely weird, but it's not got the finesse of that old school hunter. But they kind of sit and talk. She's talking about like love at first sight. He decides to go to the bathroom. We've seen him coughing a little bit more at this point. It's like, oh, okay. He brought up like her boyfriend and all that kind of stuff, but he was gone. He gets to the bathroom. Dean's talking like, hey, it's not her. Something's killed this dude. And then he gets kind of like bushwhacked. But what was funny was that Jack's like, hey, this is going really well. I'm gonna need you to give me the sex talk like right now. <laughs> and it's like, but of course he gives him the information of what's going on. He gets like, oh, like, oh crap. He comes out and he's trying to figure out how to save the situation. But of course Dean comes in and is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh God, she's not the monster. Uh, we kind of have a zombie situation on here. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, Jack was getting into that. Here we go. And he's like, Archie, it's her high school boyfriend. And Dean gets Jack to get Harper and take her out while he's trying to deal with the whole zombie scenario. But he's got more intelligence and everything and isn't immediately trying to go brains on him. He kind of gets knocked out a little bit. Well, not knocked out completely, but he gets smashed up against the walls. Pretty good action scenarios in this episode. But he's about to, like, have a big chair fight with the dude. And he just goes, man, walks out. He's like, oh, God. Jack and Harper take refuge in the library. And Jack thinks that he's locked it. But she unlocks it. And we find out that this is essentially a role-playing scenario. She's a necromancer. She killed her boyfriend after college to keep him in the town. And in order for them to kind of have fun and everything and also to replenish him, He's kind of been killing all the people that have been trying to go out with her. And she's, like, going on about love and everything like that. Like, Jesus Christ. She's, like, the, one of the last of her family. I think line of necromancers. So it's like, holy crap. So Dean is able to get in the library as well. He formulates this plan because since it's a necromancer using this zombie, they have to get him in his grave and stick a silver stake in his heart to kind of knock it. So they're able to, like, cuff him and everything, but Harper has escaped, and I kind of like that. They kind of won because they stopped the immediate killings, but this opened up an avenue for kind of another arch nemesis for kind of Jack at this point. I know that Michael's been kind of his arch nemesis, but it's kind of cool to have Jack have a kind of almost Harley Quinn-like villain out there trying to kill him, because she's like, Oh yeah, I kind of like you now, but we'll get through with that after I kill you and make you a zombie, pretty much. Shit. Because that's, he's the first one to get her to move out of the town. Now granted, it's because of your necromancer where hunters were trying to kill your ass. But, okay, take that silver lining if you want. She was kind of crazy. And a little bit off-settling, actress-wise, as she was playing it. And I kind of liked it. I'm like, okay. Because I'm like, oh, okay, sickly sweet. We'll see kind of how this happens. I'm like, oh, you're a crazy motherfucker. I can deal with this. So we'll have to see if she comes back in and if the writers do anything with it. That's my whole issue. There are good potential things in this. I don't trust the writers to live up to the potential. Of it. So they were able to get everything settled up. Dean's, of course giving him praise for how he's handled himself and everything, saying that he'll talk him up to Sam, and that they'll have to get him a crate of cough drops for that cough, but of course he starts going even further to see blood on his hand, and he starts bleeding from his nose as well, and he goes, I don't feel so good, and he falls down on the floor, and that's where the episode ends, and I like the whole thing going on with Dean and Jack, Dean being more of a mentor and actively really teaching him, which is a far cry change from the beginning where Dean was like, 
I'm gonna kill this kid. No whole, no whole bars kind of shit. And it's just cool seeing that relationship develop. And they had a really good setup. I just wish that was the whole episode. And we didn't have anything to do with the Sam and Charlie scenario. Now we're going to have to see how this all plays out. Because we keep getting teased out with what's going on with Jack. And I saw in the previews that. Jack is dying, and that we'll see how that whole scenario plays out going forward. Because it's the revolving kind of door of death and these death scenarios with, like, comic books and Dragon Ball mostly. I find myself more comparing this show to Dragon Ball than I ever thought I ever would in my life. So we'll see how this goes and how, if he dies, if he gets his Nephilim grace back, if he comes back, what goes on with that? And it doesn't matter how it really does, how it all gets resolved. It's the execution of it. And I just keep losing faith with the writers because lately I felt that this has gotten back to kind of the worst kind of storytelling along with some weird camera work that's been going on, not necessarily in this episode, but throughout since like season six and seven. So I don't know, man. I, I would be hard pressed to recommend this season, at least at this point. Granted, we're still going through and we could see how storylines wrap up, but I'm like, this just seems like too many cogs and too many plates are being balanced at this point. And that it's going to be really hard to kind of like wrangle everything together into a cohesive plot point to finish out the season. So those are my opinions on the episode. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. If you liked it, if you didn't like it, if you agree with me, if you disagree with me. Also like and subscribe, and I hope you have a good day.